Man, you just never know what's coming in life. It, life is truly a roller coaster ride, and this week for me really epitomized that. Uh, I started off this week in a bad spot. I got real sick. Uh, you know, the kind of sick that you just don't get every year. Uh, it felt like the flu, but without any of the congestion or anything, it was a high fever. You know, I was I slept basically all the way through Monday. It, it was bad. My, that on top of my mother was going in for surgery for some pretty serious stuff. Uh, you know, just life was pretty pretty rough for the beginning of this week. Uh, you know, I started feeling better on Wednesday, which was great. Uh, my mother made it through her surgery, no problems. Everything's a okay. That was great. And uh, on Thursday, I finally start feeling better. I start feeling like my normal self. And I got the best news. I jumped into the nightfall with Patrick, uh, my co-host for the Planet Destiny podcast. And he had, like, the greatest news. We got Deej for the podcast this week. And that was incredible. So, Deej, if you don't know, is the community manager for Bungie. And I think that he's a really good community manager. Now, community manager is a tough job for any game, but for... Multiplayer games, especially games that kind of evolve over time, like Destiny has been doing, I think it's harder than the normal game. Now, people are passionate about this game, about Destiny, and that comes out of a place of love. I'm positive of that. You know, people love this game. They love the way it feels. They love the core mechanics of it. They love the collectathon. You know, they love a lot of the things about this game. But there's a lot of things that they'd like to see added or they'd like to see changed. And Deej, he, he's got a kind of interface between the fans of the game and the people that actually create the game and mold the game into what it is and what it's going to become. And that can be a really hard job because, you know, as we know on the internet, people do not always speak as eloquently as you'd like them to. You know, a lot of people's feelings comes out as just kind of hate. And it may not be meant as that, but there's little room for subtlety in language in a 140 character tweet. So, you know, it can be difficult. And I find that a good community manager like Deej really offers a lot to a community uh, like we have here with Destiny. And to me, that is the best part about Destiny is the community. How amazing the community has really kind of embraced this game and embraced each other to really form an awesome place to play and an awesome place to make new friends. So for me, to meet Deej for the first time, this is the first time I've ever interfaced with any kind of you know developer or community manager at any game studio. And Deej really, to me, is kind of a, you know, he's a prime example of like how to do this job right. And it was really an amazing opportunity. And I felt like it put Planet Destiny kinda on the map. It kind of, uh, you know, it put us, gave us a seat at the table. Now we're talking to Deej. We got an open dialogue with the community manager of Bungie. And to me, that was a really amazing thing to actually talk with him. You know, we had everybody on the podcast last night. And, you know, so each of us only got to get a few questions into Deej. But it was a really spectacular, you know, it was just a really spectacular night and it was really fun to do. So I'm going to put a link down in the description of this video so you can listen to that podcast. It's already up on planetdestiny.com. I think you'll really enjoy it. But man, like it just goes to show what a roller coaster life can be. You know, as down as I was at the beginning of the week and how like high I am at the end of the week, just the progression of this week, the way this week has flowed has been just absolutely amazing and completely unexpected. Uh, you know, I'm lucky that things turned out as well as they did. They don't always do that. You know, it, it was just everything turned out well. You know, I got better. I was sick. I got better. My mother, you know, her surgery went really well. And that was something to be th something to be really thankful for. And I got to meet Deej, you know, the community manager for Destiny. It was just, you know, all of these things were great and really rewarding and really fun. And it, it was just, it, it's amazing how well everything turned out in the end. Uh, and it just, it goes to show, you know, it's sometimes life looks like it's kind of kicking you in the teeth. And uh, man, if you stick with it, a lot of the time, you know, it comes back around. It really does. And uh, it's really fun. So one of the things about talking to Deej though, was we were not 
going to ask him about kind of future content. You know, he kind of said at the beginning, you guys can ask, but I won't be able to answer. So it'll basically just be a waste of both of our, our time. So, you know, we made a decision. We're not going to try and, you know, stick them. We're not going to try and we're not journalists, right? We're not, you know, we're not uh, hard hitting, you know, reporters. We're just guys who really enjoy this game. Uh, and we looked a little deeper into it than I think most people do. And that's why people enjoy both Planet Destiny and this channel, the Briar Rabbit channel. So, you know, a lot of people may be kind of disappointed that we didn't ask him, you know, about House of Wolves, but he made it clear up front that he's not going to answer any questions about future content. So we didn't bother asking it to him. Uh, and But what I think he gave us were some really interesting answers to the questions we did ask. And I think it's well worth listening to that podcast if you're interested in the game at all. Uh, I really had a blast talking to Deej. He's a really interesting guy. He's a really fun guy to hang out with. So uh, definitely listen to that podcast. All right, I'm going to stop talking about that podcast, but I do want to start talking about another podcast, The Beastly Thought Show. So we skipped The Beastly Thought Show last week, uh, ba basically because it was Easter. Uh, you know, people got family stuff to do. We do that show on Sunday nights. So a lot of times that that schedule for the show is going to kind of conflict with people's family lives just because Sunday is often kind of that that big family night for so many families. So we decided to just kind of skip it for the week, uh, move it to next week coming up or this week coming up. So we will be recording the Beastly Thoughts show live this Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern. And I really, I'd love to see you guys kind of jump into the chat, uh, ask us some questions. We do read the chat while we're while we're recording the show. Uh, we don't always get to answer the questions because we do try to keep it down to an hour and we usually have quite a number of topics to get through. Uh, but we definitely listen to comments. If you've got any questions for us before the show starts, uh, we do try to read off some questions for the hosts at the end of the show. So if you got any questions for any of the hosts, for me, for Beastly, for Robbie, for Not Too Nerdy, uh, definitely leave them in the comments to this video. And I'll, I'll bring all those questions with me when we record the show on Sunday. I'm not saying that we'll be able to get to them all, uh, but we'll definitely try to get to as many as possible. Uh, I also want to talk about House of Wolves a little bit. So House of Wolves, the details on it definitely remain elusive you know everybody who's playing destiny right now is feeling kind of the the lull between the dark below and house of wolves there's definitely been a long gap between new content in destiny and i think everybody's feeling it you know i think the iron banner helps somewhat unfortunately there's no pve equivalent to the Iron Banner, like uh, the Queen's Wrath. I'd, I'd love to see a return of the Queen's Wrath, just to break up, you know, some of the activities that you perform on a week-to-week -week basis. You know, I still enjoy raiding. I am getting darn sick of the hard mode Crota's End raid. I still don't have a Necrochasm. I really do still enjoy doing normal mode on Crota's End. I, I feel like it's a fun experience, but on hard mode, it's so... It's so infrequent to get a group that can actually complete all the different phases as a group that I often find that we basically send, you know, if I'm a hunter, I will go and I'll just like solo the abyss part. And then we'll have, uh, for the bridge crossing session, we'll have, you know, a couple of warlocks with self res on and one hunter go across, hide, and then the warlocks will self res after everybody's kind of. Uh, disappeared after all the enemies have disappeared. You guys are well familiar with this cheese. And then even for the Crota fight, you know, it's just like you got a hunter doing all the work and everybody else is kind of just standing on a ledge with a rocket launcher. So with the normal mode, it feels like an action movie and everybody's involved and everybody's having a good time. But on hard mode, it, it always feels like you just got one guy doing all the work and everybody else is just kind of waiting, you know? And that's probably my biggest problem with the Dark Below or with the Crota's End Raid, and that's why I really enjoy doing the normal mode and don't really enjoy doing the hard mode anymore because people just don't have the the drive to try and, you know, do a straight run at hard mode anymore, or the time, you know? It takes a lot of time after you've put in, you know, all that time doing it time and time again, 
People are just kind of sick of it. They want to get that necrochasm. That's really what people are looking for at this point. It reminds me of the Vex Mythoclass. People were just doing the Vault of Glass over and over and over, waiting for that Vex. As people start getting it, those raid teams are starting to get a little more thinned out. You know, <laughs> People are like, well, I already got mine. I don't need to do it again this week. You know, all I'm going to do is stand on that ledge and fire rockets anyway until our hunter gets his shit together. So we'll see what happens. Uh, so I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the House of Wolves brings. I'm, I really want to see a raid uh, that can scale a little bit better than Crota's End did. Uh, the way that they scaled the difficulty of Crota's End with just kind of creating harder characters and more of them or harder enemies and more of them i don't really feel like it worked the way they intended it didn't add to the action movie feel of the raid it kind of just forced everybody into this really defensive position uh to try not to be the person who dies and i think that is not the intended effect of the changes they had so i'll be looking forward to seeing what luke smith and the raid guys over at bungie have to say about the House of Wolves raid. I'm really looking forward to that. So, had a lot of stuff on my chest to get off uh, today. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with this video. Hit that like button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.